So again, just as a reminder to get our bearings for where we are in Paul's letter, we can see that whereas uh, the first section, uh, well, actually, just look at the whole letter, that this uh, letter was written so that the Christians in Rome would not be ashamed of the gospel, so that they would be bucked up, they would have some confidence and some moxie with regards to the gospel. And the first uh, two sections are about the problem of sin that plagues all of humanity at the individual level, so that we're all guilty and we're all corrupted in our daily lives by sin. And we already covered how God saves us from the guilt of sin, and now we're looking at how God, or we're beginning to look at how God saves us from the corruption of sin on a daily basis. So, uh, the question that we had last time uh, was regarding this statement, all sinned. What does this mean, all sinned? And the answer becomes in here. And here's the problem. If you're going to say that all people die because all people have sinned, uh, well, how do, we, how do we know that's true? Well, Adam was given a direct command of God, and if he violated that direct command, he was told he would surely die, which eventually they did. Under Moses, the time of Moses going forward, uh, God also issued commands in, those, in that instance, uh, in the Ten Commandments, and if you didn't obey those commands, you would die. So, what about between Adam and Moses? That's the part that's talked about here. From, oops, from Adam, verse 14, to Moses, right? Those whose sinning wasn't like Adam's transgression because they didn't have a direct command to disobey. What happened with these people between Adam and Moses? Did they die? And the answer is yes. They all to a person died. Well, except Enoch, but we won't talk about him right now. He's an exception. But all died. And they died, why? Because of their sin. So sin always leads to death. All people have sinned, and as a result of it, they all die. Uh, this little line here where it, sends, where it says sin is not counted where there's no law, of course, doesn't mean that there's no guilt whatsoever. It means simply that absent a law, sin is not as clear. So that's what that little statement there meant. All right, so now we're going to notice something else uh, uh, for our next question, which is the beginning of this comparison. Just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, and then look at that little dash right there at the end of the, the word sinned. What, what is that doing? Well, what that's saying is that he began this comparison just as, and the, the, the comparison is between Adam and Jesus, just as through the one man, Adam, something happened, his one catastrophic error led to the demise, the, the death of all of humanity, uh, in... So, in a similar way, Jesus' great act of obedience has led to the salvation that's offered to all of humanity. And that comparison gets broken at the end of verse 12. In other words, Paul never finishes the comparison because he's going to uh, pause to explain what all sin means. We, already, we talked about that. But then you would expect in verse 15 here that this is where the comparison then would pick up again but it doesn't. The comparison doesn't actually pick up until verse 18. As one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification. As by the one man's disobedience, so by the one man's obedience. Okay, so that's where the comparison picks up down here in verses 18 and 19, which leaves a question. Leaves us a question. What are verses 15 to 17 doing? What, what, what are they there for? Why didn't Paul just resume the comparison? So that's what you get to work on uh, and to think about. And uh, best wishes, and we'll see you next time.